Hi everyone, in this video I will be providing a tutorial on how to install Linux Mint with full disk encryption. I already have Windows installed and will be installing Linux Mint in a dual boot setup. This will be with full disk encryption and not just the home directory that is seen in the installer. Also, not in the installer is using a separate EFI partition for Linux Mint. And this is to avoid future boot issues due to using the default Windows EFI partition. Microsoft is known for removing anything not related to Windows in the default EFI partition, which would remove the Linux Mint boot files, making you unable to boot Linux Mint. And this can happen after a Windows update, so I'll address this as well. A minimum 4GB USB drive is required for the Linux Mint ISO, and 20GB of space is the minimum needed to install Linux Mint. So I'm going to go and download it. Going to linuxmint.com, download. And there are three versions here, Cinnamon, XFSC, and Mate. If you have modern hardware, you can use Cinnamon. I'm going to download Cinnamon. Scrolling down and select the mirror. Next, going to download Rufus. Going to rufus.ie. And this will allow me to extract the ISO onto my USB drive. So I'm going to download the portable version. Once both are downloaded, I'm going to my downloads folder, opening up Rufus. Yes, yes. Select your USB drive. Mine's already selected and select the ISO. Linux Mint. Change it to GPT and UFI and start. Okay. Okay. All right, it's completed. Close. Open up disk management. Okay, and here's my C drive. And so Linux Mint requires a minimum of 20 gigabytes and I am going to allocate 50 gigabytes. So I'm gonna shrink and put in 50,000 megabytes. Now I'm going to reboot and go into the BIOS. Ensure you have secure boot disabled in your BIOS. Next, ensure you have your USB drive to be booted first, and then afterwards, save changes and reset. All right, so it's booted into the USB drive, and I'm going to start Linux Mint. All right, and I'm going to start Gparted, which is Partition Editor, as a GUI. So here's my unallocated space, and I'm going to create three new partitions. The first new partition will be the EFI partition, just for Linux Mint. Right click new and it'll be 512 megabytes and i'll name it as linux mint efi fat32 add the next partition is going to be for slash boot new and i'll have this as two gigabytes it's going to be for slash boot as partition name ext4 add and the last partition will be for everything else new, and then hit add. And then at the top, hit the check mark to apply. Apply. And you can look at the details, and then you can hit close. Okay, the new partitions have been added, five, six, and seven. And so to have the Linux Mint EFI partition used for the install, going to right click, manage flags, and then check off boot close and then for partition one which is the default windows efi partition i'm going to remove the boot flag close and then after the install i'll restore it now i'm going to set up full disk encryption and it's going to use partition number seven open up a terminal sudo in run crypt setup And this is going to be on partition number seven on my NVMe drive. Type in yes in capital letters and then enter in a passphrase to encrypt. All right, and this is the passphrase that you'll use to unencrypt the partition. And now I'm going to open it up. And it's going to be opened up as the name underscore crypt and then put in your passphrase 
And if we check the mappings, we'll see that it's there. Next, I'm going to create a physical volume for it via LVM. It has been created. And I'm going to create a volume group now. Call it Linux Mint Volume Group. And I'm going to create logical volumes now. And the first one I'll create is for swap. And I have 8 gigs of RAM on this system, so I'll have it set as 8 gigs. And then the name for it, I'll leave it as swap1. And then the volume group LMVG. And then I'm going to create another logical volume, and this will be for everything else. And it's going to use the rest of the free space. All right, and now I'm going to run the installer. Continue. Select your keyboard. Install the codex. And at this screen, we're going to select something else. Continue. All right, at this screen, we're going to see all the devices. So we have all the mappings here, and then we have all of the partitions listed below. So I'm going to go back up, selecting the first one. So this is going to be for root, change, select it as ext4, format it. It's going to be for slash. Next one here, this is going to be for swap, change, swap area, OK. Next is the EFI partition. I'm going to hit change and confirm that it's the EFI system partition. Hit OK. Next, partition number six, change. It's going to be ext4, format it, and it's going to be for slash boot. Hit OK. And the device for bootloader installation, it's going to be on NVMe 0 and 1. And more specifically, it's actually going to be on P5 here. And then once ready, hit Install Now. And here it's asking to confirm. And then hit Continue. Select your time zone. And enter in your name, computer name, and password. And at the bottom here, you don't need to encrypt, as there's already full disk encryption. Hit Continue. And at the bottom left, you can hit the arrow just to see the progress. Installation's complete. Select Continue Testing. And I'm going to open up Gparted again. And going to restore the boot flag on the first partition. And we see it's back. Close. And so there's post installation steps needed. Next is setting up Crypt tab so I can unlock my encrypted drive. So first, I'm going to have to cheroot into the newly installed system. And so Linux Mint uses the target directory. So I'm going to use the same thing. It's going to mount dev mapper and then Linux Mint. It's going to be the root. And then we're going to do it to target. Next, going to mount the slash boot partition, SDA6. Target boot. Oops, should be NVMe. And now I'm going to mount Proxys dev and Etsy resolve into the target directory. And now I'm going to chew root into it. And I'm going to mount df-h, and we see it mounted. So that's good. Now I'm going to set up Cryptap, but first I have to get the UUID for partition number seven. I'm going to copy. And I'll use Nano to open up the Cryptab. Target name, and then the source device, which is the UUID. And then there's no key file. 
and then the options, we want to use Lux and Discard to allow for SSD trim, and then Control X to exit, save, yes, and then enter. I confirm, I'm going to cat it, and now I'm going to create a new initram fs image, which is the initial root file system. And then dash k, it will specify the kernel version, and I want to do it for all. And dash c will create a new initram fs. All right, it's been generated, and now I am going to exit out the true root and reboot. I'm going to remove my USB drive. Go into your BIOS and check your boot order. And in my case here, it's going to be booting Windows Boot Manager first, and then second is Ubuntu. It comes up as Ubuntu, as Linux Mint is based off of Ubuntu. So I will have to change the boot options and have Ubuntu be option number one. All right, so it has booted into Linux Mint. Put in the passphrase that you set up earlier. And if you put in an incorrect passphrase, you'll get an error such as this. So I'm going to put in the correct passphrase. Log in. All right, so there was no grub menu to boot between Linux Mint and Windows, so I'm going to fix that. Open up a terminal. Sudo in. Put in your password. And I'm going to edit the Etsy default grub file. And scroll down. And where it says grub disable OS prober, I'm going to remove the hash in front of it, the pound sign. Control X to exit. Save, yes. And then enter. Now I'm going to run OS Prober to probe for other OS's, Windows. All right, so it's found it. And I'm going to run grub make config to make a grub configuration file. All right, it's been created, and now I'm going to reboot. All right, grub comes up as expected. And so there's Linux Mint, and there's Windows Boot Manager. Just going to confirm I can get into Linux Mint. All right, and now I'm going to reboot again and confirm I can get into Windows. All right, it's booted into Windows. And that's it. That's how you can install Linux Mint with full disk encryption in a dual boot setup with Windows. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.